توانا بود ارکی دانا بود ز دانش دل پیر برنا بود دلوی او بخون کی خدای پنامه گران قد من دوستان و سلام علیکم هیله ده چی رو خوشحال هوا را مسی او دن روزی ده پوهن را ناده په خبرون دیر خیر خلاص زه مریم اسماعیل سلایم او دا خبرون تاست ده آریانا افغانستان ده نری والی شبکه سخورند کوم خدای دوکری چی ده نن روزی ده پوهن را ناده خبرون هم استاسو سر پور او استفاده ورسیگی بینندگان عزیز و ارجمند برنامه دانش روشناهی است با ارزوی صحت و سلامت شما با نام امروز آغاز می کنیم امیدوار استم شاد و صحت من باشین و افتی خوش و پر سمره ده. در هر گوشه و کنار جهان که هستین با عزیزانتان به خوشی و آرامش سپری کرده باشین و امیدوار استم که با پای تلویزیون هایتان نشسته و بدون کدام جنجال بتنین برنامه را تا آخر ببینین برنامه جالب و دیدنی و خوب است مثل همیشه ما از معلومات برنامه استفاده خوب کرده میتونین و دوستای عزیز ارجمند امیدوار هستم که عزیزایی که از طریق فیسبوک ما رو میبینن اگر لطف کنین و شما هم در صفحاتتان برنامه رو شریک بسازین تا دوستای عزیز شما هم بتونن که از برنامه خوب ما مستفید شون خوشحال میشیم خب دوستای عزیز قسمی که اگر دوستایی که برنامه های ما رو امیشه میبینن باید داشته باشین دو هفته قبل معرفی از فارغین پوانتون ها و مکاتب عالی بود و عموان ما از جوانه عزیز ما دعوت میکنم که بیاین لطف کنن و در برنامه ها اشتراک کنن چون شما نمونه ها و مثال های خوب برای همه هستین که رازهای موفقیت تا برای همه بگوین و همچنان چیزایی که براتان دشوار بوده و اگر کدام چیز را شما کدام ندامت و پشیمانی داشته باشین اگر شما چانس دو می داشتین چی چیزا را تغییر می دادین و چی چیزا خوش هستین که شما باعث موفقیت تان شده این همه رازهای موفقیت تانه با ما با بیننده های ما در میاد بگذارین یک کار بسیار خوب است و اکثرا وقتی که جوان ها با برنامه می آین همه بیننده های عزیز را چی که در هر طرف می بینم باید از طریق ایمیل اونا بسیار اگه استقبال خوب می کنن و یکی از دلایل که بعضی اوقات جوان ما جرات نامی کنند که بیاین به خاطر مشکل زبان می باشند و این ما برتن اطمینان خاطر می توم که جوانای عزیز ما می توانند که به زبان انگلیسی هم در برنامه صحبت کنند هم در قسمه که در گذشته ما همیشه همی پالسی برنامه ما اسب چون وقت ما یک جوان و یا نو جوان را به برنامه دعوت می کنم اونا صحبتشان از صحبت هایشان زیادتر ام سنا و ام دورایشان با مو سنین سال همه گی استفاده بیتر می کنن و بیتر است با مو زبان خود از اونا صحبت شود و ما عموما فشرده صحبت هایشان را به زبان فارسی هم می کنم بخاطر که اگر چون تلویزیون ما یک تلویزیون جهانی است و پدر و مادرها و جوان دیگه که به زبان انگلیسی اگر آشنایی ندارن چرا میخوایم که اونا هم از معلومات برنامه مستفید شوند ولی تقاضا و خواهش ما همیشه از شما بیننده های عزیز است که وقتی که به برنامه تلفن میکنین نمیخوایم که وقتی یک جوان به زبان انگلیسی صحبت میکنه اونا رو انتقاد کنین 
باید قدردانی کنین که اونا جرحت کردن و دعوت مرا پذیرفتن و آمدن و آزر شدن که از تجارب خوبشان شما استفاده کنین و میمان عزیز امروز ما یک نوجوان بسیار عزیز است که ما از خودم دعوت کردم از پیشان بخاطر که بسنه بسیار خورده این سن 16 سالگی اینا از های سکول فارغ تحصیل شدن و قرآن از این شانه سه بار اینا با تجوید ختم کردن کارهایی را که اینا کردن در مکتب از بسطلا کارهای اکسترا کریکلر اکتیویتی هایی را که کردن کارهای بسیار پر مفهوم و پر معناست که برای جوانای دیگه ما که با های سکول هستن برای از اونا اینا ای جوان عزیز یک نمونه و مثال و رول مدل بسیار خوبه است و البته تقاضای ما همیشه از کل جوانایی نیست که همگی باید یکسان باشن موفقیت هر انسان فرق میکنه برای موفقیت مانع از این نمیته که پیشرفت شما به دیگرها چه قسم معلوم میشه ای ایچ وقت یک انسان نمیتونه موفق شوه که برای ازی که دیگرها را خوش بسازه و برای دیگرها یک چیز میکنه موفقیت یک انسان چیزیست که برای خودش اونمو کافی باشه خودش خودش قانع باشه خودش بفهمه که امو آخرین زحمت را که میتونست بکشه به چیزی که در راهی که علاقه داشت کشیده و به موجه خود رسانده و ای که اگر ما بخواییم که یک کار بسیار مثلا کار را که مهمان امروز ما کرده اگر پدر و مادر ای فشار با فر... بالای فرزندان خود بیارن و بگوید که تو هم باید می قسم باشی ایچ اصلا اولی که بسیار یک کار مشکل و دشوار است که او کار آدم هر کس کرده بتونه بخاطر که استعداد و توانایی و قدرت و علاقه هر کس فرق می کنه ولی ضرور است که هر انسان امو علاقه خود در دل خود بیافه و بفهمه که ما شوق ما چی است و علاقه ما چی است چی می خواهیم شوام و چی چیزها را باید یاد بگیرم وقتی که بفهمین که شما به چی علاقه دارین بعد از او چطور می تونین که اقدام کنین قدم اولتون چیز قدم دوم چیز قدم سوم چیز قدم بعدی که شما را برسانه به مو مطلبتان موفقیت مانا از نداره که شما یک کس را که و یوتیوب میبینین شما یک کسی را که از دوستا و عزیزانتان است ببینین امروشون خود مقایسه کنین فرزندانتان را مقایسه کنین او اصلا موفقیت نیست بلکه دچار ناکامی میتونه شا... که انسان را بسازه خب البته صحبت های می داشته باشیم امروی میمان عزیز خود که اینا از تجارب خود بگویند که چی چیزها باعث از این شد که اینا تانستن که آی سکولا با سن شانز سالگی تمام کنن چی کارهای پیش ازو کردن بود ازو چی پرانهای دارن از چی اشتباهات خود آموختن و چی چیزهایی است که اونا را به اصطلاح باعث افتخارشان است که خوش هستند که و قانع هستند از اینکه انجام دادن و میمون بسیار خوب و عزیز ما دورجان افریدی است که برای دورجان خوش آمدید میگم البته قسمی که گفتم در جوانای ما همشان با یا به زبان فارسی و یا پشتو در با فامیل و قدر کافی میتونن تکلام کنن اما قسمی که شاید باید خواسته های خود در یک برنامه بگوین برشون آسان تر است که به زبان انگلیسی صحبت کنن دوره جان دیر خیلی خوشحالیم سه دیر منه نسه دعوت به قبول که سلام دیر سلام تو پاجور بی خیر سنگه خیر نیم تا سنگه تشکر منه نسه شکر Shakur. Um, uh, I love your background. I was just here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, all, all right. So how does it feel to be all done with high school? It feels really good. I'm actually really glad. I like the way um, community college so far has been working for me. I like the way like the professors uh, like work and the way that we study and how that's yeah. wonderful. So do you mind telling me like just take us back to the very beginning of your life. Where were you born? Where do you go? Uh, all the way to, um, I, I'm not telling you to all the details, but just like where were you born? All the way to like high school? Tell me please. And then I'll give you more specific questions. 
Okay, so I was born and raised here in like the San Fernando Valley. I went to Calvert Elementary and then uh, until the first grade. And then I started going to a private Islamic school until the eighth grade. Then ninth grade, I went to Taft Charter High School and then transferred to Granada for sophomore and junior year and then graduated this year and here I am. Very good. So uh, out of all this, which era of your life is the highlight of your life and why? Um, in my educational life? Right. Like, um, it would be my junior year, honestly, because that was the year where I finally was able to like understand like what studying so like uh, the way like what studying forms of studying was like better for me like i feel like it takes people a while to finally understand like what way works best for them and finally by junior year i kind of understood that like i was better at just teaching myself and like learning on my own so like it was more efficient for me and i just it became it, make, it made studying like more it was a highlight for definitely definitely that's wonderful. So when you were in elementary school and in middle school, were you involved in any kind of extracurricular activities? Did you have yes. a question? Yeah, okay. So in elementary school, I, I was in uh, the private Islamic school and they were involved in a lot of stuff like science fairs and like Islamic studies competitions. Um, I won first place in every science fair. And then I participated in Islamic studies and chronic studies competitions. And then they had an inner school spelling bee. Um, in the seventh grade, I won third place for the inner school spelling bee. And they had um, a local, not a local, uh, an inner school like uh, newspaper. And I was the editor of the newspaper. Uh, for middle school, I also, I attended a Kumon. So I had their curriculum that I was studying as well. And then I was doing kickboxing and Tong Sudo, which I got a black belt in. And that, yeah, that's about it for middle school and elementary. Have you used your black belt on anyone? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good thing, uh, but that's good to be, to feel empowered, right? So. Yeah, thank you. I really enjoy it. I like to feel like, I like to feel, I like to feel a sense of like strength in, within myself to know that like I'm capable of defending myself with the people around me, or if anything happens, I can take care of myself, you know? That's wonderful. It, has it helped you in any other ways? Um, it has made me physical, physically strong, and like that stamina has been useful, like for situations. Like I go hiking with my family a lot and biking, and then sometimes like we get really exhausted or like everyone is like behind. But I'll be fine because like I was always practicing in martial arts. Do you still practice? Um, no, I haven't practiced in like a year and a half now. But I still do hiking and like biking and working out with my family. That's awesome. So yeah, thank you. Other than academics. Um, what are your major what were your major accomplishments in high school so i was involved in a lot of extracurriculars in my first year i was in uh, spirit and leadership and i was still attending kumon but instead i was teaching there now so i was working as an employee and then i attended mathnasium and i was still attending martial arts i was in the korean club and i did that because that was the elected the elective language i was taking so it was convenient for me and then with um, with spirit and leadership, uh, we had a lot of events. So like we would like volunteer in football games or back to school nights, and then we had our own events that like for example coins for cancer. We uh, we we raised uh, two thousand dollars in coins for the children's hospital, and then for the second semester we had to choose to make our own event, and I decided to do the religious roundtable where I I got in contact with um, religious leaders from all around our community, and that was really difficult too because I had to find like religious leaders that were willing to come, and I had to arrange it. And finally, I got a day where um, all, I had like rabbis, I had priests, I had imams, they all came. And we had a select group of students and they sat for lunch with the, uh, with the religious leaders. They asked questions about anything they were curious about. They just talked, like just had conversation. And we had, did it out in the in middle of the cafeteria for the whole school to display to the students that like people with different like religious beliefs or like uh, different ethnicities or race or whatever, they can all sit together without conflict and they can communicate their thoughts and ideas ideas they can ask questions and then I ended up announcing it to like everyone around so that they can join the table if they wanted to and then I gave each leader about 10 to 15 minutes on the stage with the mic um, to a answer any questions that any students in the crowd had and we had a lot of students come and ask questions and their questions were answered and it was very successful 
And then I also did three years, not three years, sorry, three hours every Sunday. I volunteered at the nursing home. And I did a book drive where I collected books from my school, my job, um, my martial arts studio, and I donated it all to my local library. That's awesome. That's so wonderful, especially volunteering in a nursing home. What yeah. did you learn from that? I mean, it's really, uh, it's, I bet it's a rewarding experience. And I bet, I bet that um, all the people that uh, live there, they appreciated your company. But what was it? was in it for you what did you learn from it honestly at first i didn't feel like I, I learned anything until after i kind of contemplated when i stopped going i kind of realized like i got to realization that everyone at some point in life is gonna get that old they're gonna be sick and they're gonna be in pain and that like a lot of us should have we should have a lot of patience when speaking to those kind of people and it made me acknowledge that like I sh i've been taking my youth uh, i've been taking advantage of my youth mm -hmm. i've not been appreciative of it and like it gave me communication skills to how to speak to people uh, who are elderly, who are in pain, you know, how to adjust to other people. Some of them like wanted certain things as other people like they had different needs. So it made me learn to adjust and communicate. And it made me like very grateful for being healthy the way I am right now. That's awesome. Um, do you recommend it to others to do the same? 100%. I feel like volunteering is amazing and it's, it's helping your community. So it's like, it's great. You feel good after. So it's definitely worth it. Very good. So tell us, how did you, um, how were you able to graduate um, at 16? And how did you do it? And why did you do it? So um, it was a very spontaneous decision. I wasn't really sure I was going to do it until a junior year. That's when I kind of came to realization on how I learned better. And I feel like when I went to school every day for six hours or seven hours a day, I felt like in each classroom, we had about 50 minute periods. The teacher would like teach us for 15 to 20 minutes. And then for the rest of the class, he would just like leave us to study on our own or to do homework on our own. And I didn't learn very well that way. I felt like I learned better when I just you just give me all the assignments I'm supposed to learn, tell me what I need to prepare for, and I just sit on it on my own, just teach it to myself, go like check YouTube for resources and like I, I learn better when I'm teaching myself. So I felt like if I did an online course, I can easily study in two hours that whole thing I'm doing in the six hour day period. So I talked to my mom about it and she agreed. So I, I did the online schooling and I took seven classes and I was able to finish my whole day work in like two hours. So then I thought with all this time, what am I gonna do? I don't wanna just continue on in high school high school if it's going to take this long and I have all this free time so I registered for college classes in my community mm -hmm. college and I made sure they were um, they were for high school and college credit so I took four classes during well in total four during the winter and spring session and I graduated this year all right congratulations Thank so you. you are more of an um, independent learner and yeah. did it fe make you feel um, deprived of your social life because when you're studying online, <clears throat> of course, um, in, in addition to your high school classes, you had to take some college courses too because you had the free time. Mm -hmm. And were you still able to do anything like, um, because that would of course um, eliminate the option of doing extracurricular activities to hang out with your friends. So how did it impact your social life? Uh, and then and, and whether it was positive or negative way? Um, honestly, it, it did make me feel inferior compared to other high school kids, high school girls that were always going out. I had a few weekends with my friends. Like, I wouldn't go every single weekend. I would go out. But, like, once in every, like, two weeks, my mom would let me go on the weekends with my friends. But um, I wasn't able to go out every day, stay after school and hang out or go to parties or any of that. And then I would constantly see people always out. So it made me feel bad at first because I was like, that's not fair. Like, I want to be out. But it was honestly really worth it because if I spent all that time like having fun and having a social life, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Like all my friends are still at school and I graduated. So it's a plus for me. 
Very good. خب البته دوست عزیز قسم که تا به حال امروز دور جان صحبت کردیم. دور جان یک نوجوان بسیار زحمت کش و موفق و بسیار در سوز و میربان است که در نرسنگ هوم و یا منزل کوهن سالان که اونجا هم رفته مثلا بر یک مدت کار داوطلبانه کرده که یک تجربه بسیار خوب است برای امره بزرگا هم سر کار داشته هم خورما هم سواب هم بر از اونا یک کمک بود که یک وقت به اکسان سال می باشین که به یک آلت می باشین مخصوصا در دنیا غرب که مردم سر فامیلای خود قدر حساب نمی کنن وقتی که یک جوان می بینن همیشه به چهار طرف خود دیگه اشخاص مریض و ناتوان تنا می بینن وقتی که یک جوان میره اونجا کمک می کنه چقدر بر از اونا انرژی می بخشه چقدر یک کار سواب است و چقدر خودش آموخته از اونا تنها علمی که از اون طرز تفکر و طرز صحبت های از اونا شاید چقدر آموخته باشه و از یک از بزرگترین درس زندگی را آموخته که آینده یک انسان به یک شکل نمیمونه و آینده چه قسم است و یعنی این تو یک آینده را ما هم به پیش می داشته باشیم و همچنان دور جان که به سنف یازده هم بود ما توجه شد که خودش بیترین رای مخت... یاد گرفتن و آموزش برش ای بود که خودش برای خود درس بده و خودش معلم خود باشه و اگر فرزند شما هم امو خواسته دارن یعنی بر از شاید امی آنلاین لرننگ یک چیز درسته باشه و در غیر از او اگر که فرزندایتان که بسیار خوش دارن که امروی دوست و رفیقای خود باشه برای از اونها شاید که یک کار درسته نباشه یعنی یک انتخاب است که ارکست کردن نمیتونه باید بسیار یک نفر امو احتمال به نفسش بسیار قوی باشه که بفهمه که میتونه می کار خودش انجام میته و اگر خود شخص خود یک نوجوان ای تصمیم نگیره و بالاش قبولانده شه عواقب بسیار منفی داره ای که خود دور جان دلیل موفقیتش است که خودش پیدا کرد که اینمی رای است که برای موفقیت بیشتر برش میاره و زیادتر موفق میتونه باشه توانست که ای کار کنه اما ای کار اگر جبری باشه بسیار خطرناک است و امیدوار هستم که هیچ وقت که فرزندان خود ما این کار سرشان جبری نکنیم که یا که یک سنف بستل امتحان سویه بودن به خاطر که فشار دماغی، جسمی، روحی از هر نگاه بالایشان میه اگر تصمیم خودشان نباشه ما باعث پدر و مادر یک رهنما هستیم و تشویقشان کنیم رای درست و از غلط برشان نشان بتیم و فشار نبیاریم و اگر بر دور جانی یک فشار می بود و پدر مادرش برش می افتن تو این می انتخاب داری شاید ایچ وقت موفق نمی شد شاید ایچ وقت امیر را انتخاب نمی کرد خب دور جان back to you um, if you can tell us what were your challenges as in your personal and in your academic life so far um so far uh i guess the personal challenges would be that i wouldn't be able to go out as much or to have as much fun as most people would in my age um and but i don't see it that way so much anymore so i guess it wouldn't really be a personal problem like uh, challenge i've also like i've learned to manage my time better too now so i've, I've been able to overcome that and i'm able to perfectly balance my like academic and personal life now um With academic, honestly, it was challenging at first before I knew um, I knew how I was able to learn. Like I was constantly just going to school and then I would go home and have to reteach myself everything that like my teachers were telling me in the first place. So once I was able to like understand that, oh, I learned better just being independent and like studying on my own, it was I was able to like manage my time better. So it was more convenient and it like helped me overcome all that like wasteless hours of studying. Very good. Um, no, Mukhada, you're very mature for your age. And, uh, Thank well, you. Probably this skipping uh, school was for you. Um, do you mind if I also take calls? The cause of, of what? Calls, calls, phone calls. Oh, yeah. Yes, you mind or you don't mind? I will mind. No, no, I, 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 might, I don't mind. I don't okay. mind. Okay. Bali, salam, bufarmain. 
بیننده ازی سلام روی خط هستین شما با تلفن لایف با برنامه لایف زنگ زدین I guess it was your lucky day, so no answer. I guess the, uh. <laughs> I probably didn't think it was a live show. <laughs> Dora John, what helped shape you who you are right now? Honestly, my parents, they helped shape me a lot. They, since I was a kid, they always brought me up like knowing that like your education is the most important thing. Like your education always comes first. And my parents are always very well informed on like how to succeed and what to do, what classes to take. So they were like my personal guidance counselors, which was very helpful. And like they were always on top of me with my work. So it helped me get to where I am now. I'm very grateful for it. That's awesome. And that's nice that you understand and appreciate that. So yeah. um, who has been your role model in life? Um, my biggest role model is honestly my older sister. I really look up to her because she's she's done a lot of amazing things, and I want to be just like her. Since I was a kid, I've always like thought like I always thought of her as really smart and independent and strong and beautiful. And I just thought, wow. Since I was a kid, I was like, wow, I want to be just like that. And I've been following her footsteps lately, so I'm excited to see how it goes. That's awesome. That's I'm sure she's very happy that you consider her. Uh, you, her, your biggest role model, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you can tell me now, how did you learn how to read Quran and not just reading it, but reading it with Tajweed, and what made it easier to learn? So since I was a kid, my mom always just had me memorize like surahs and duas of the Quran. And then since I started uh, Islamic school, I was always just reading the Qaeda in class. And then in third grade, my mom put me in, um, despite like having the private like Islamic school education, I had another private uh, Quran teacher. And then from third grade, I started reading the Quran with her. I did it for a couple years. And then that was just learning to read the Quran. And then I had to do it with another teacher, just learning completely the Tajweed and everything. And I finally like learned everything and got the approval to teach the Quran in ninth grade. And um, honestly, it was really difficult at first because my sister especially was a lot better than me, especially when it comes to Tajweed, and she was younger than me. So I felt really discouraged about that. But honestly, the, the best advice I could give is just keep reading. The more you read it, the more fluent you are. And then it's easier to like spot where there's supposed to be like a certain Tajweed rule, like where it's supposed to, certain things supposed to happen. And it just becomes faster in your head and then you just become better. It's just practice. That's awesome. So since now, I mean, Arabic is much harder than reading Farsi and Pashto. Uh, since now you understand that uh, you can read Arabic and especially you can read Quran with Tajweed. Are you able to have you tried or are you able to read uh, Farsi and Pashto also or no? No, I don't. I've never tried actually yet, but my mother has ta like talked about teaching me. So hopefully I, I tackle that soon. But um, with the Arabic, exactly. Yeah, the meaning is, it's, I don't, uh, study, I, I can read Arabic, but I don't understand the meaning. I do read it with the, with the definition. And then within the Islamic school, we'd always study like the tafsir of it. So I would like really like understand the meaning of each suda, but I don't remember it by heart. Oh, of course not. I mean, that's, yeah. uh, <laughs> I was, I was, I should have told you that I was going to quiz you maybe on a surah to give me the tafsir and the meaning, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that good yet. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, you know what? No matter how many times you read the meaning, you listen to the meaning, um, every time it, you kind of get a different message. Yeah, it's you, so you grasp more of it. <laughs> Right. Or you can get like different views too. Right. So if you can tell me, um, why do you think it's important to have strong religious values? Oh, why do you I think, think it's that's important? actually very important, um, especially living nowadays here in like America and in our like society. Um, it's very easy to be strayed from from the right path and from your culture and your religion and from your morals. And if you don't really have a strong sense of faith or like a strong connection to God, or you don't know your religion very much, it's easy to be influenced. It's easy for people to, to make you confused about your religion and confused about what's right and what's wrong. And then you make bad choices. And that's all because of like, 
it's, it's something that could have been prevented, you know, by like studying more about your religion, researching, praying more, and getting closer to God. I feel like it really helps keep like a sense of who you are and it keeps you a very strong person. So I'll take you back uh, to where you told us about your volunteer work at school and mm -hmm. to the round table discussion of different uh, religious, uh, religion, mm -hmm. religious leaders. Um, what did everyone learn from that? I mean, of course, if you did not have this strong uh, um, value, religious values, you probably, it wouldn't have been easy for you to even organize such a program, right? Mm -hmm. Because usually people who are not um, enough knowledge, they don't have enough knowledge about their own uh, values and um, especially religious background, of course, they cannot organize and oversee such a program. But what was the outcome of it for others? Um, honestly, I feel like people were able to, to um, they were able to like, get over any misconceptions, they were able to learn more, like, I feel like, especially with Islam, too, a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about their religion. And I mainly I wanted to plan it so that people can learn more about my religion and the misconceptions, and how we're not all like the way the media portrays us to be and that there's a lot more to our religion. And obviously, I invited all the other religious members too, so that there are people who are curious about different religions can learn about them. I never want to like, pressure a religion onto someone or pressure a right way to someone but i felt like this was a great way to show everybody their options like my mom always told me she's like don't study one religion yes you're a muslim and you're supposed to study islam but study all the religions because somehow a lot of them they have a lot of things that are very similar and that's things that interconnect with each other and she's like if you want to like if people ask you a question about your religion and if you really want to have a strong foundation and really know you have to know things about other people's religions too so i thought this was a great way to expose people to other religions and if they had any misconceptions or any questions instead of just judging or keeping to themselves they could have always asked you know i gave them an opportunity to ask and to like get a different perspective you know that's very good so your mom has a great influence on you too that's awesome yeah that's good that you have her uh, and that's uh, important that you listen to her too because of course our parents guidance is always always <coughs> the best and our parents are always the best, want the best for us. Yeah, Jenna is under the footsteps of your mother, so it's yeah. really important. Very good. Um, Dora John, before I move on, I wanted to ask you, um, who is your, uh, you listen to Af uh, Afghan music, right? Who's, yeah. Who's your, um, who, or who are your favorite artists? So we can have a song ready for you, like after a few questions, I want to give you a break, and because you're my youngest guest, after a long oh, time <laughs> so i'll reward you with one of your favorite songs or a song from your favorite artist um, honestly any song from like ariana saeed or farhad daya i listen to them a lot with my parents okay so uh hopefully we'll have a song ready for you for the next okay. um after next few questions uh right there she, um she john Thank you. Okay, what kind of things and people inspire you to strive better in life? I'm sorry, what kind of what? What kind of me? people and what kind of things um, help honestly, you to strive better in life? Honestly, I've always just grown up with such a like like a strong sense of justice and a strong sense of like right and wrong, and I've always felt like I've always felt like I had. I f always felt like I had to be a better person and I always had to help my community and looking up to my older sister and my family my family is very like well educated and they're very good people and they always like they brought me up to know like always do something beneficial to the community or always do something that's rewarding for you rewarding for other people and even like it, like for example my older sister she's becoming a doctor right and I want to follow in her footsteps and a lot of it, I guess, has to do with, like, our religion as well. Because we've grown up being taught that, like, first thing is, like, God, then our prophets, Rasulullah, and then it's our mother, and then after mother is doctors, and then teachers. So my parents are always, like, do something that's, do 
be, ha, choose a profession that's like serving the community. So like be a teacher or a doctor or like do something for your community, a politician. Or, so I always just thought like right after mother, the best thing was doctor. So I always thought like I want to be like the best person that I can be, the best thing I can be. And that was always just doctor in my head. So I've always just worked really hard to do that. So I guess religion has a lot to do, a lot of to influence with it. And then my family too. Hope <laughs> I'll قسمت چیزهایی را که دور جان گفتن اولی که نام خدا خواندن قرآن شریف امرای تجوید آسان نیست که سه بار ختم کردن و و مادر و پدر خود همیشه گوش کردن مقصد مادرشان یک رول بسیار امدی را و نقش امدی را در قسمت در مثل که در هر فامیل وزیش می باشه که مادر اولین معلم است و اولین معلم دور جان هم که دور جان همیشه برش گوش کرده و به نسایی مفیدشان همیشه گوش کرده و عمل کرده که امروز قدر باعث موفقیتش شده و یک چیزی را که مادر دور جان برش گفته که واقعا بسیار یک چیز بسیار مهم است که ما همه ما باید هم برای هم ادیان احترام داشته باشیم و هم برای هم ادیان در موردش مطالعه داشته باشیم اگر ما بخواهیم که امو دین خدا بر دیگرا نشان به تیم و معرفی کنیم و در باریش عرف زده بتانیم و از دین خود دفاع کرده بتانیم بیتر است که در در مورد ادیان دیگه هم معلومات داشته باشیم که ما با دزوب به طور مقایسوی صحبت کرده بتانیم و بتانیم گفته که چرا مثلا چی چیزایی در مورد دین ما برتری داره و مخصوصا که در دنیای امروز که چقدر متاسفانه که دین اسلام به قسمی که دیده میشه و بسیار یک شکل زیبایی اسلام مردم دیگه نمیفهمن تنها کسی که اسلام مطالعه کرده تنها کس حتی یک مسلمانان خود ما شما افغان های ما که امروز تمام روز باعث چقدر تخریب کاری و انفجار و قتل و قتال و دزدی و خیانت و همه چیز میشن اینا اگر مسلمان باشن اگر اسلام معنایش بفهمند اصلا این کار نمی کنن حتی اگر درباره ادیان دیگه بفهمند در همه ادیان آسمانی این چیزا من قرار داده شده و ای که دور جان در مورد ادیان دیگه هم مطالعه کرده و میتونه که در مورد شبا دیگر را صحبت کنه این بسیار یک چیز بسیار مثبت و خوب است که زیادتر امو اعتماد به نفسش بیشتر می سازه وقتی که مقابل میشه با یک کسی که اگر خواسته باشه که از دین خود دفاع کنه که واقعا قابل قدر است خب آله برای دورجان آهنگ دلخواهش و یا آهنگ از هنرمند دلخواهش نشر می کنیم و بعد از چند لحظه با ما باشیم با سلام های مجدد شما در برنامه پوهن را ناده و یا دانش روشناهی است با من مریم اسمایل ارسل هستین و میمان عزیزم دورجان افریدی که یک نوجوان 16 سال هستن و از مکتب عالی فارغ تحصیل شدن یک جوان موفق خوب هستن امرشان صحبت داریم و به صحبت های خود ادامه میتیم و اگر شما دوست عزیز هم خواسته باشین که تلفن کنین سوال داشته باشین برای رازهای موفقیتش و ایوهی که برشان تبریکی میتین هم لینای های تلفن باز است لینای های تنه میگیریم دوره جان ویلکم بک کن یو tell us if you had a second chance um, if you had a second shot at the first 16 years of your life what would be one thing that you would change um honestly one thing i would change is how i prioritize my time because i've always had a lot of extracurriculars since i was young my mom loved to keep us busy so then a lot of times like i would like be training i would do like i would get home late and then i would put off an assignment or i'd forget about a test or i would miss something And that's like got me like, it's, it's brought my grade down. And I feel like I could have done a lot better academically if I didn't let my extracurriculars get in the way. And if I felt like I prioritized it more, because obviously my grades and like my assignments are a lot, like they're a lot more important than my extracurriculars. So if I could go back, I would definitely prioritize my time better. 
That's awesome. Uh, واقعا که اگر دوره جان چانس دوم می داشت که در 16 سال اول زندگی خود که اگر من سوال کردم اگر یک چیز تغییر می داد uh, از وقت خود استفاده که از وقت خود می کرد او را به اصطلاح شاید یک برای خود یک پروگرام تر می کرد که چی کار اول باید کند یک مرتب می ساخت تمام فولیت های روزمری خوده مثلا درس کارخانگی یا باید اول می کرد باید از چی باید از چی بعضی اوقات من خودم باید یک معلم می بینم که وقتی کارخانگی چک می کنم می بینم که شاگرده می گه که بعضی وقت می گه که بسا ما نکردیم دلیل چیز مثلا یک شاگرده بسیار لایق کارخانگی نمی داشته باشه به خاطر که می گه من شو بیسبال پرکتس داشتم و یا فوتبال پرکتس داشتم باید که گفته دوره جان با فرزندان خود ما قسم ترین کنیم و برشان بفهمانیم که کار مکتبشان کار تعلیمیشان از همه چیز کده مهمتر اولتر است دقیقا از اینکه اگر فکر کنیم که فرزند ما قدر با استعداد است که میره یک سپورت کلیر پروفیشنل میشن و قسم عرفهی اینا میرن باسکتبال بازی میکنن یا فوتبال یا بیسبال و از ایست که وقت سر سپورت تمرینات و مسابقات سپورتیش هم زیاد تر فشار وارد می کنیم اما در غیر از او باید که اول کارهای تعلیمی و کارهای مکتب از همه کده مهم تر است مخصوصا در های سکول آنقدر فشار بالای متعلیمین می باشه که همیشه باید واضح است که نمراتشان می خب باید در پسنگ باشه که پسنگ چی است سی سی یک نمره درست نه یعنی برای یک شاگرد لایق نیست باید کوشش کنیم که اول در ها و کارخانگی خدا همیشه فرزندان ما به اتمام برسانن کار مکتب وقت درسی وقتی که تمام شد بعد از او به فکر سپورت بعد از او وقت اضافی خدا مصروف سپورت همه چیز کرد وقتی که ما میفهمیم که خب هفته سه روز برای دو ساعت ما پرکتس داریم برای سپورت پس باید بفهمیم پرایورتایز کنیم گفته دور جان که اولیت از تعلیم است که کدام ساعت پس ما اول کارخانگی خود باید اول تمام کنیم که بعد از او بتاریم و خاطر آرام و پرکتس بریم و با گیم بریم That was a very good point دور جان Thank you for bringing it up because a lot of times young people of course sports and other activities are more fun they always prioritize those And usually, yeah. uh, schoolwork takes the back seat, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I, if I would go back, I would definitely prioritize that more because that, that affects your future a lot more than any extra, extracurriculars will. So, if you could give any parent, parenting tips, like to parents, what kind of tips would you give them? What could they learn from you today that would help them with their own children? Honestly, I feel like with most of my friends who um, haven't done as well like as I have in school, their major complaint is that their parents aren't really on top of them and about their schoolwork. Like they wouldn't ask about any tests. They wouldn't ask if they completed a homework. They wouldn't like check on their work. But my parents constantly, my mom would be very involved. She would have meetings with all my teachers, constantly get updates, ask me about a test, a quiz, assignments, everything. She would quiz me at home. She would remind me, make sure everything is right. Sometimes she would come and check to make sure like I completed everything. And although I, I found it very annoying in the moment, I would get upset, but I'm very grateful for it now because honestly, that's what's keep me in check. In check, because like a lot of times we want to prioritize like watching the YouTube video or like finishing the show on Netflix. I'm like, we're like, oh, we'll finish that assignment later. Like, oh, it's not worth that many points. It'll be okay. But with my mom always on top of me, I've always like finished everything, and I I've, I've caught myself in times where I would be like, no, like I just want to watch Netflix and like leave it. And she would come and she'd be like, oh, where's your assignment? So it was very beneficial. It really helped me get to where I am. And like a lot of my friends who who haven't done well, uh, although they, they admit that they would have found it annoying as well, they wish that their parents were more on top of them with their schoolwork. So I that's, feel like that's a big thing parents should do. That's another good tip. Thank you. I asked Dora Jones how old I am. یک نظریه بر والدین داشته باشه که برشان کمک کنه چی خواد بود که یعنی واضح است که او نظریشان بر والدین کمک می باشه بر فرزندانشان و نظریشان ای بود که همیشه یعنی 
فرزنده ما بر ما بر رهنمایی ما ضرورت داره بر یادواری ما ضرورت داره مخصوصا وقتی که فرزنده ما بزرگ میشن تکر میکنیم که رای خدا یافتن و خودشان کار مکتب خدا میکنن بالای دوره جان قسمت گفتن همیشه برشان یادواری کنین که کارخانگی کردی برای امتحانت آمادگی گرفتی و بعض اوقات هم پرسان کنین که نشان بته برای تانمون کارهای مکتب خدا خاطر که دو سنه که مثل, مثل که دوره جان هم گفتن که یعنی یک وقت خوشش نمی آمد وقتی که مادرشان پرسان می کرد اما آله می فهمد بسیار کار خوب بود که می ده نمایی مادرشان مداخلهشان که برشان میشه بسطلا انوالف بود و اصد داشته درس هایش رو همیشه پرسانش می کرد که کارخانگی در نشان بته کردی درس خواندی بر امتحان آماده هستی مثلا وقتی که درس می خوانن نگان اگر یک استادی گاید می داشته باشه یک که بفهمن پیش از پیش ایش درس بخوانن شما میتونین که از پیشم سوال کنین امرایشان تمرین کنین آماده بسازین شانه این چیزاییست که یعنی در های سکول هم چیز نیست که ما فکر کنیم که او دیگه اولاده ما کلان شده حالا وقت رزیست که بانیم شانه که خودشان امرای خدا پیدا کنن ارقدر که ما واقعا بسیار زیاد از این نگاه برشان هم تو بسیار ایلایشان به تیم رها کنیم پشتشانه اونا زیادتر فکر میکنن که ما متوجه نیستیم و شاید که از وقت سو استفاده کنن به جای درس شاید که امروی رفیقای خود باشن گیم بازی کنن کارهای دیگه کنن خب دوره جان آیا خودت کدام هابیز داری؟ What are your hobbies? Um... For hobbies, uh, I, I don't have much time for hobbies, so it's not very, like, often I do this, but I like to go hiking with my siblings, and then I go for bike rides around my neighborhood for, like, an hour every day. Um, sometimes I do some, like, painting or, like, write poetry, but I'm, I don't have, like, a very, like, set hobby that I constantly do. I tried picking up guitar, but I wasn't very good at it, so I gave up. That's still good. So, but don't give up. You know, it's always. Um, it might be a good getaway. That's from... true. Yeah. Now that I have more time, I'll definitely give it a try. <laughs> right, and you're very talented. I'm sure. Thank you. Sky's the limit for you. I mean, of course, everybody has different types of talents, but it doesn't hurt to give it a try. Yeah, I was never very musically inclined. I was more into like writing and like academics. And like physical, yeah, physical stuff. I was very competitive with like physical activities. Do you read a lot? Um, I used to read a lot in middle school and elementary, but once I got into high school, I didn't have time to like leisurely read any books. It would always be like a book for a school assignment. Okay, if you can now, let's, um, uh, we're gonna, the next set of questions is going to be about the current pandemics. Okay. So how did that, um, impact your life how did it affect you socially and academically socially uh, it kind of took away the weekends i had with my friends which was okay but it also got me a lot closer with my family because my parents were always working so now they're always at home and we had to find like ways to like like entertain ourselves and like to pass by time so like we got a lot closer we would play card games and watch movies together and like some would invite like our cousins and have masks on and just play like like scramble or uno so it was really fun i got closer with my family and academically uh any challenges it was difficult to adjust at first going into online courses and not having your teachers physically there because i like the fact that like i would be able to like stay after class and be like oh i need help with this or like i would go for tutoring or i can ask them for some extra credit and normally extra credit would be volunteering or doing something after school but i don't have those opportunities anymore but now i i do have a lot more access to resources online while like doing my assignments and it's a lot less time consuming so it just took time for me to adjust and and now I, i've overcome those challenges it's not that big of a deal very good so what life lessons did you learn from this pandemics and how would it help improve your future your life in the future um i learned that we kind of have to adjust our, adjust ourselves to anything that's been thrown at us because no one would expect like a pandemic to happen and all your classes to be online and not see your teachers and libraries be closed and and books come in like in a month now instead of getting it from the bookstore 
So we, I had to adjust, like, being used to, like, just studying at home, not being able to reach out to my teachers so often. And it was a difficult adjustment at first, but then once I set myself to, like, studying that certain way, it got easier. So it kind of gave me, like, the skill, the life skill to, like, that'll help me in the future. Because, like, we never know what's going to happen, and we should always just learn to adjust to whatever is our, whatever situation is thrown at us. Okay, so because due to social distancing, all the graduation ceremonies were canceled, how did it make yeah. you feel? Um, I didn't really have any personal feelings about it. I didn't really care for a graduation at first because I was graduating my junior year, so I wasn't even graduating with my, my class. So I didn't really care for a graduation in the first place because I wasn't like close to the class. I didn't go to the prom or any of that. Um, but... Also, like with the pandemic happening, it kind of gave me an excuse not to go to my graduation and people were really bummed out about it, which I didn't see the point because there are people literally dying. So your graduation is not that big of a deal. It's just high school. There's college graduation. There is doctorate level of graduations like you can always go further and get more graduations and there's people dying. So it's kind of selfish to feel sad about your graduation not happening. That's very mature of you. That's very good. So. Um what would be some stories that you would tell the future generations about this era of your life with pandemics? Um, I would kind of just really tell them about how selfish the people really were during the time of the pandemic. Like a lot of the countries right now aren't struggling as badly as we are. And that's just because like if you go outside, there's so many people without masks. There's so many people not quarantining. They're still going out leisurely just because they want to have fun, going to bars and restaurants or like having parties. No one's really social distancing. And then they're making very, very uneducated um, excuses for not wearing a mask. And it kind of made me realize how selfish these people are. They don't like, they don't feel scared that what they can be doing can be harming someone else right now. The fact that you're uncomfortable and you're more concerned with being comfortable, you're caught, you could cause someone to die and that doesn't bother them. So it, it was very selfish. It kind of really made me feel disappointed to live in such a place where people don't really care for their neighbors and their community so much, um, which is, which is, I don't know, that's something I would definitely talk about and hope that the future generation would change. Very nice. Thank you very much. So it was very nice having you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your willingness to be with us. So we Thank are running out of time. Me. It was fun. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you. Hope <laughs> Vatashekure. فراوان از دورجان عزیز که ناب خدا و بسیار زیبایی و جرحت از تجارب خود صحبت کردن و موفقیت های بی پایانش آرزو می کنم و باید قسم که گفتم ایچ وقت ما فرزندان خدا یکی با دیگه مقایسه نکنیم مثلا که امروز بین ده عزیز درست است که دورجان یک مثال نمونی بسیار خوب بودن برای همه ولی این چیز ما از فرزندان خود نمیتونیم توقع کنیم و بسیار ضرور است که برای فرزندان خود یاد بتیم که ایچ وقت ترس و حراس نداشته باشن همیشه فوکس داشته باشن در زندگی همیشه مصمم باشن دیترمنیشن داشته باشن یک تصمیم درست داشته باشن در مورد آینده خود مخصوصا در مورد تحصیلات خود برای زیگی تحصیلات عالی چیز بسیار زیاد مهم است فرق نمی کنه که آیا فرزند ما می خواهد دکتر شوه و یا می خواهد که آرائشگر شوه و یا می خواهد که معلم شوه و یا آشپس شوه و کلچپس شوه اونمو چیزی که علاقه و شوقشان است اونمو دیترمنیشن و تصمیم داشته باشند که با کار اقدام کنند و همیشه امید داشته باشند امیدوار باشند هوپفول باشند و همیشه خود توانمند و امپاور احساس کنند هیچ وقت فکر نکنند که ما یک کار را کرده نمیتونم وقتی که یک چیزی را که علاقه برش داشته باشند ما باید امو توانمندی را برشان بتیم ما باید امو پشتوانه و سپورت برشان باشیم که بتانیم که با مو هر چیزی که رشته که فرزند ما میخواهد تحصیل کنند 
کمکشان کنیم که امو بهترین دمو رشته خود باشه و بتونن که به دگرها هم اونا یک لیدر باشن و به دگرها هم دمو قسمت که اگر علاقه داشته باشن بر زنها هم اونا کمک کرده بتونن و هیچ وقت چیزی ده که اونا برشان علاقه داره دل سردشان نسازیم باید کمکشان کنیم اگر نمیفهمن که چی رو انتخاب کنن برشان کمک کنیم که پیدا کنن که اشتیاق درونیشان چی است و چی علاقه دارن با اون صورت است که میتونن موفق باشن اما اگر بالاشان به زور و فشار قبولنده شوه هیچ وقت نمیتونن که به مورش تمام کنن و اگر تمام کردن نمیتونن موفق باشن خب باز هم دوست عزیز در جمعان تشکر از که برنامه امروز دیدین با تشکر مجدد از مهمان نوجوان عزیز ما دور جان و از امکار عزیز ما شادی جان بنامه امروز به امین امین جیبه پایان میرسانیم دوره جان خداحافظ تان تینکیو بری مچ خداحافظ تینکیو خداحافظ تینکیو خداحافظ تینکیو و افته آینده محترم دکتر سیب آمش درویش روی عمل کرده ماز با فولیت های روانی افراد در سنین مختلف یعنی از زمان حیات در داخل رحیم تا که هنسالی صحبت میکنن تا افته آینده خداوندی ها رو مددگاره